Hello and welcome back. This is video number two. And in this specific video, we're going to show you a bird's eye view of how Facebook retargeting works. So you may have a general idea of how Facebook retargeting works, but my goal here is to kind of give you a visual mind map of how all the pieces connect together. Because if I jump in and start showing you to do this, to do that, and I don't explain what things are and why things are important, I know that you will get confused and I don't want to overwhelm you. So that's the goal here. So let's dive in. Obviously, this is going to be the visitor and the visitor comes to a website, a landing page, whatever page that you want. Let's say that it is a blog post and it could be a specific blog post. It doesn't matter. So they visit this blog post and on the blog post, in order for us to know that they visited the blog post, there's going to need to be a piece of code. And that piece of code is called a Facebook pixel. Now, I'm not going to talk about that right now, but all you need to know is that the Facebook pixel tracks them. I'm going to talk briefly about the Facebook pixel later on because it can get kind of technical. So all you need to know right now is a piece of code that tracks them and lets us know that they have visited this particular blog post. Now, bear in mind that if you want to learn how to set things up with different scenarios, what do you do with an opted page? Or what do you do when you're trying to get somebody to fill out a form? Or what do you do when you're trying to sell a product? Well, I'm gonna talk about different real life examples in the next video. All right, so just keep that in mind. Let's just talk about the basics. Okay, so from this point, let's say it's a blog post and maybe in this situation, what we wanna do is whenever somebody visits this particular blog post, we want to create an audience specifically for this. All right, so whenever somebody visits here, they are going to have the Facebook pixel there and then this visitor essentially will be added on this part to a custom audience, all right? And don't worry, we're gonna explain all of this later on. Now, this custom audience is gonna allow us to say, okay, anybody who visits this page is now added to this audience here. Now, why do you need an audience? Well, you need an audience because when it comes to trying to put ads up. So let's put this up. Let's do a Facebook ad. We have to find a way to show this ad to this audience. So obviously from the custom audience here and the Facebook ad here, directionally, we are gonna show the Facebook ad to anyone who visited this blog post. So this is a very, very basic Facebook retargeting. So let me repeat this. Let's do a recap. A visitor comes to the blog post and this piece of code is just happens to be on this blog post, which will allow us to know, okay, this person visited it and they're segmented into this audience. And therefore we then show them Facebook ads on Facebook to this custom audience. So that is a very, very basic scenario. Now it can get a little bit more tedious if you add more things like email opt-ins or everything else like that. But I just want to start with the basics. We'll talk about more about real life examples in the next video. Now, what you will need to learn is the Facebook pixel, how to use it, how to set up different things like triggers, different ways to work with variables. And the Facebook pixel is just more than a piece of code. It's, it can track when somebody visits a page. It can track when somebody buys a product. It can track when somebody opts in. So in other words, if you want to know if a conversion happened, then you will need the Facebook pixel again. So the Facebook pixel is essentially a piece of code that is on your whole website and based upon where they land, where they convert, 
It is all recorded. So we'll talk more about that later on, but let's move on to the next video. And I'm gonna give you some real live examples and real life scenarios. We're gonna show you different mind maps for different scenarios so that you have an idea of kind of how things work. Welcome back, this is video number three. And as promised, I am going to give you some real live examples of different scenarios so that whether you're trying to build a list or whether you're trying to sell a product or whether you're trying to just brand yourself, different scenarios call for different setups and different types of campaigns. So we talked about the blog post earlier and that's fairly simple, but let's say for example that you want to build a list. How do you set things up, all right? What if they don't opt into the list? How are you going to retarget them to get them to sign up for the list? So what you really have to do is you have to get an idea of what you want to achieve. What action do you want? Do you want an email? Do you want a sale? Do you just want to brand yourself and expose people to your awesome content? And there are other different scenarios as well. How do you get somebody to fill out a form? So how about we cover those right now? So let's do opt-in list. So let me jot this down so we don't forget. So we're going to cover next. So we cover blog post. We're going to cover email, opt-in, a sale and perhaps a branding. Yeah, we actually, blog post is actually branding. So branding. Now you could do go further and show them ads of other related content as well. You could do that. But the goal here is to try to keep things simple. All right, we don't wanna to get too complex because believe it or not, Facebook ads can get very, very complex. Funnels can grow and ex be extensive as possible, but let's keep the things simple. So we got a sale, well, let's do perhaps a form. So you have to think what is the intention or the goal? So the, the goal with an email opt-in is to get an email address. The goal of a sale is to obviously get someone to spend money. <laughs> so getting somebody to pay. So get someone to buy. And then with the form you need to, you want somebody to fill out the form. Now you also have to think, okay, what happens when somebody completes the email? What then happens? How do you convert? and how do you track that conversion? So you don't show a Facebook ad to somebody who has bought, right? So it's kind of an if then else. If this happens, then this happens. If this doesn't happen, then this happens, right? So let me explain, let's do an email opt-in. All right, somebody comes to a landing page. So we'll call this a email capture page. And then of course, there's gonna be a Facebook pixel on this email captured page. Now, I'm gonna remove these because it's gonna get a little bit longer. And I'm gonna delete this. I'm gonna actually copy this back, but we're gonna move this over here. So if they fill out the email, what is after that, all right? What is after that? So after that, depending on how things are set up, if you've got it set up with double opt-in confirmation, which means they have to check their email address and click the link and all that, and it goes to that page or they fill in the email and it immediately directs them to the next page. Whatever the page is, we'll say page two, this could be where the freebie is located and you're gonna to need to have another Facebook pixel on that page, right? So if you think about it, the Facebook pixel needs to be on this page. 
Now, the only reason why we would want to show a Facebook ad is if they came to the email capture page, but they did not give us their email, right? In other words, if they did not fulfill the action, then you need to show a Facebook ad. If they did fulfill the action, you don't need to show the Facebook ad, unless, of course, you're selling a product. But like I said, let's keep it simple. So from this point, they either give us the email and then they land on this page. And this Facebook pixel will need to, we'll call it a conversion, and it will need to let us know if it actually converted. Now, if they did not, so we'll put over here, did not give email. So this is if they gave us the email, if they did not give us the email, and that's why I put an arrow here. So these are scenario one. So we could actually name this. Let's, let's name this scenario one. in scenario two. And obviously scenario two doesn't have a page or anything. It's just merely they exited this specific page. If that's the case, we want to retarget them, right? So we are going to say, if they did not give us the email, then we're going to put them into a custom audience. So in certain respects, what this is going to do is if somebody visit this page, but they did not visit this page, then we put them in a custom audience. If they visited this page and this page, then we do not retarget them. Now it's going to be a little bit more easier to understand when I visually show it to you. But I just want to give you a bird's eye view here. So at this point, they did not give us email. So therefore we add them to custom audience and then we show them a Facebook ad. Now we could add those who signed up into another custom audience as well. So let's say we want to build a list and then we want to retarget them with a lot of great content or a product, for example, that we sell within the email. So different scenarios will require different setups. So that's one setup, that's an email setup. So not only are you setting things up for the if they fill out the email, but if they do not fill out the email. So the next thing we have is a sale. So you'll notice that it's actually very similar. If a visitor comes to a page, and this page can be the sales page, and of course we pixel them, and then they either buy or, so, so scenario, they buy, and that is a Facebook pixel conversion, or they do not buy, and then we add them to a custom audience and we show them a Facebook ad for the goal of trying to get them to buy. Maybe they're not ready to buy, right? So you could show a Facebook ad of free content that is related to the sales page. Because most likely if they visited the sales page, they're interested, they're just not sure, right? You could show them a Facebook ad to a coupon. So there are many different ways of doing this. So now you can kind of get an idea. It's, it's very, very similar from the email to the sale, any type of conversion, it's very, very similar. So now we have a form. So let's see here, we got sales page here. And let's do a form. So they come to the form and our goal is to get them to fill out the form. So we got a Facebook pixel here as well. Of course, scenario one, they 
fill out form. And then we have a Facebook pixel and we're able to track that they did fill out the form. And scenario two, they did not fill out form. So we want to retarget them with either really good content or something that speaks directly to them to try to get them to come back and fill out the form. And that can be the Facebook ad. So as you can see, anytime you have a action, it actually becomes very, very similar in the setup. So now that you have a better idea of the different real life scenarios and examples, let's move on to the next video and talk about the Facebook pixel, what it is, why it's important and where to get it. Hello and welcome back. This particular video is video number four and we're going to focus on the Facebook pixel. So we briefly talked about that earlier, but before we dive in, I want to say that you will need to have a Facebook business account. So to do that, you'll need to go to business.facebook.com. That's business.facebook.com. You'll need to create an account so that Facebook knows that you have access to certain ad accounts. So with a business Facebook account, you are able to not only access your own account, but you'll also be able to access anyone else who gives you permissions to do so. Now, as far as the pixel goes, once you have created an account, what you'll need to do is up at the top, you'll see this events manager and you'll see this slash 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 icon. You'll click on that and then you'll click on the all tools down here and then you'll click on pixels right here. Now, bear in mind that Facebook oftentimes will change around their user interface. So if it doesn't look exactly like this, then look around and you'll likely find the pixels. Now, like I said, Facebook changes their user interface a lot, sometimes every month, sometimes very frequently. So just keep that in mind. So what you need to do is simply go to pixels right here and then you'll land on this specific page. Now, as I briefly mentioned earlier, a Facebook pixel is merely a piece of code that you put on your website. And we'll talk more about how to add that to your website, what are best practices and all of that. But basically all you need to know is the Facebook pixel is a very powerful piece of code that allows Facebook not only to see who visits your website, who converts into a sale, who converts into an email opt-in lead, who perhaps fills out a form, and more. It also collects a lot of data about the visitor, who they are, what sites they visit, and a lot more data. In fact, Facebook in itself has so much data that as far as being an advertiser, it enables you to reach more people that are actually interested in what you have to offer. So that's basically what a pixel is. And to set it up, all you have to do is go to this page, click on setup here, and it'll give you different options. So you can either click this here to manually install, install the code yourself, and it'll basically give you a piece of code that you will install. Or as you can see here, it says Facebook Pixel currently integrates with these platforms here. So you can click that and it'll allow you to add it to these locations here. And if you are not a web developer and you have a web developer and you prefer to send that information to them, then you can click email instructions to the developer. Now we're gonna talk more about this in the next video on how to get the code, how to add that code to your website. If you're using a WordPress website, what kind of WordPress plugins should you use? And we'll talk more about that in the next video. Hello and welcome back. This is video number five and we're gonna talk about how to add the pixel code to your website. Now it's really gonna depend on what kind of landing page creator you use, what kind of website platform that you use, 
So for example, WordPress is going to be a little bit different. I'm going to show you a WordPress plugin that you can use. If you're say, for example, using a HTML website page builder or click funnels or lead pages or optimized press or any other type of landing page builder, you need to make sure that the pixel is on every single page of your funnel because you're going to want to track everything from start to finish. Or you just want to put the pixel code on the pages that you want to track. For example, the pages where they initially visit, the pages where they convert, the pages where they don't convert, and so forth. So that you're able to kind of get a bigger bird's eye view of what is happening, what people are visiting, what people are not, and all that. So if you click on the install pixel code in Facebook manager, then you'll see this page. Now, like I said, it can change, but basically what you need to do is it says locate the header code for your website. So what you're going to look for is the head tags and you're going to put the pixel code within these tags. So like I said, it's going to differ based upon what kind of platform you use. But the majority of times, if you are using something like lead pages or click funnels or something similar, then they will typically give you the option to add some sort of code to the head tag. So that's actually very easy to do. Now, when it comes to something like WordPress, you will want to add this code to a plugin. You could do that, or you could add it to the header.php template of your WordPress theme. So I'm going to show you different options that you can take, two different options for a WordPress site. But of course, if you're not familiar and this is a little bit overwhelming, you can always get a web developer to do this for you. It's really not hard to do once you understand the concept. So now let's talk about the WordPress plugin that we highly recommend that you use. We actually use this on a lot of our WordPress sites and it's a free plugin. If you go to wordpress.org slash plugins slash pixel your site, as you can see here, or you can simply come here, click on plugins and type that in here. That's fine as well. But this plugin is very useful and it allows you to add your Facebook pixel to certain pages of your WordPress site. So it's a matter of just simply installing the plugin, grabbing your pixel code and adding it to the settings area. So it's very, very easy if what we talked about before, it seemed a little bit daunting. Now, once you have everything installed, the next thing you're going to want to have is you're going to want to install a Google Chrome extension called the Facebook pixel helper. And the reason why you want to install this is because you want to make sure that the web pages that you're inserting into Facebook actually have the Facebook pixel. You definitely don't want to assume that it is installed and set up your campaign, pay the money for the Facebook ads and realize, oops, it's not there. So this is a, another free plugin for Google Chrome. And if you're using other things like Safari or Firefox, you can probably go and Google Facebook Pixel Firefox or Facebook Pixel Safari. But for Google Chrome, this is what we use. And all you have to do is install it. And as you can see down here, you're going to see this icon and any web page that you visit in your funnel. If you click that, it should say that the pixel has been found. If it has not been found, you either need to reinstall it, showing what we talked about earlier with the WordPress plugin and all that, or even just hiring somebody who knows how to do that. And it's really not that hard, but this is going to make your life a lot easier. So again, go to Google, type in pixel helper Chrome extension, and you'll get this right here. And that's really all you need. All you need to do as a recap is number one, install the pixel in the head tags 
for any web page that you want. And number two, get this Chrome extension so that you're able to test and make sure that you've installed the Pixel correctly. So now that you understand how to add the Pixel to your website, your WordPress site, or your landing page builder, let's move on to the next video and let's talk about the Facebook Pixel variables and the different settings of the Pixel itself so that you're able to track, you're able to see what is converting and all that. Hello and welcome back. This is video number six and we're going to dive into the Facebook pixel and talk about the different variables and settings, which according to Facebook is also known as standard events. Basically all that means is that you're going to have a different code or different keyword for different scenarios. So we're taking a look right now at a standard Facebook pixel. Now I've blurred out or put X's in the area of my Facebook pixel ID. So you know that this is going to be your Facebook pixel ID. Now, if you go to facebook.com and you look for their standard events, you're going to see a list of different event codes. So you can see add to cart. This can track anytime somebody adds an item to the cart. So if you're selling maybe physical items or e-commerce or even digital items and they add it to the cart, you want to use the standard event code here. And what that means is you are going to take this code and put it in your pixel code and then you're going to put that code on that page. You have another one called add payment info. This tracks when the payment information is added in the checkout flow. So you're going to add that to that specific page. Now, some of these will relate to you. Some of them will not. So you can see complete registration. This is great for if somebody is trying to fill out a form and you're trying to get them to fill that form out and you want to track, did they fill that form or not? If they didn't, then this code would not be triggered. If they did, then of course they would land on the, the page after they fill out the form and you would put that code on that page. We can see contact, which is if they went to a contact page and they contacted you, you could put that on the code and on that specific page. So as you can see, there are tons and tons of different standard events that relate to different actions. So we have donate, we have find location, we have initiate checkout, we have lead. Lead is whenever somebody signs up on your email list, or they could be a form submission. They could sign up for a trial. They could land on a specific page where you would deem them to be a lead and you would use that code right here. And then we have purchase. They also have a code for that and a value. So if you're using USD in the United States of America and you would put the number here. So if it was $47, you would put 47.00 USD. If you were not using USD and you were using your own country's money symbol here, it could be Canadian, it could be AUS for Australia, you could put that here. And then we have schedule, we have search, we have start trial, we have submit application, we have subscribe, we have view content. So view content could simply mean they're viewing a special piece of content. So it could be something like the blog post, right? So we could send them to the blog post, you would make sure that the pixel code has this specific code in it. So why don't we go back to the pixel code and let me show you what you need to do. So let's say for example, view content. So you're gonna highlight this, click copy, and then you're gonna go back to the pixel code here. And the only item that you want to change is this item here. So where it says FBQ, parentheses, track, comma, page view, we're going to remove that and then we're going to put that here. So in this case, it's view content 
and page view is going to be removed. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take this code and put it on the special piece of content page where we want to track it. Now, if it's a lead, we simply remove this and type lead. Now, when you run your Facebook ad campaign, what's going to happen is in the campaign, you'll see these keywords. So you can also put your own keyword as well. And it's going to tell you the keywords, how many people visited it and all that. And you yourself will know, okay, so this many people out of a hundred people came 10 people, 10% became elite. So you'll see leads 10 and that will give you an idea of what is actually converting. So let's do something else. Let's go back up here and let's do purchase. So we're going to copy this. We're going to go back here. And instead of a lead, we're going to copy and paste this here. This is track purchase value. Let's say it's $47 and that's all you need to do. And you're going to need to take this piece of code and put it on the page that they see after they purchase. So whatever page that they are sent to or redirected to immediately, you need to put that piece of code on that page. Now, let's say, for example, that we have a funnel and the funnel is an opt-in page. So in that case, the opt-in page is going to have a pixel code and the track will be something like this. So the opt-in page could be a page view or view content. And then the next page after that, if they subscribe, could be a lead. So throughout your funnel, you have different steps. You have different pages. And on those different pages, you'll have different pixel codes. Now, while that might seem a little bit complex right now, it really isn't. It's a matter of just changing the keyword and putting the code on the right page. And then of course, using the Facebook pixel helper, Google Chrome extension to go back to the page, make sure that pixel is on the page and it'll tell you if the pixel is on the page and specifically what it is. So if it's a lead, it'll show a lead. If it's a purchase, it'll show a purchase. And it really is quite easy once you get the hang of it. So with that said, let's move on to the next video. Hello and welcome back. This is video number seven. Let's talk about custom audiences. Now, when I showed you the visual mind map of how everything works and the different scenarios, we talked about custom audiences being a ad targeting option that lets you find people who either took an action or either didn't take the action that you wanted. So as you can see here, according to facebook.com, a custom audience is an ad targeting option that lets you find people who already know your business on Facebook. So with that said, to get here, all you have to do is up the top, click this and then click audiences. And then you'll see a drop down menu that says create custom audience and you want to click that. Now you will see an option on creating a lookalike audience, but that's not what we're going to do. You don't really want to create a lookalike audience until you have run enough Facebook ads and you've collected a certain amount of data to know that the lookalike audience is correct. So what is a lookalike audience? A lookalike audience, according to Facebook, is let's say we run a thousand people to an opt-in page. And out of a thousand people, we have about a hundred people who opt in. Now out of the 100 people that opt in, we want to figure and reach similar people based on the 100 people that converted. So what you can do is you can create a lookalike audience with Facebook. And what Facebook will do is it'll go out into the database and find people that are very similar to the people that have opted in. Now that is super powerful. No other platform 
can do that. So what you're really doing is you're tapping into Facebook's database according to the data that you have found and comparing and finding people that are similar. You could do that with a purchase. Maybe you have a thousand people that visited a sales page and out of those people, those we have eventually a hundred people that buy. So we wanna find a hundred people that are similar. So that's what a lookalike audience is. Now, what we wanna do in this specific retargeting campaign is to create a custom audience. So these are the different custom audiences that you can create. Now, I'm not gonna talk about how to create one just yet. We'll talk more about that in the next video. But as you can see here, as far as custom audiences go, you can find, let's say for example, an email list of your customers or your subscribers and upload them here. And then you can retarget them. So maybe somebody opted in for a freebie. You could upload that here and you can retarget them and try to get them to purchase a product that might be similar to what they signed up for. So even though they fulfill the action, of signing up and giving you their email address, you can still retarget them. They're still potential buyers. Website traffic, you can create a custom audience based upon people who visit your website. So we could say anybody who visits our opt-in page or anybody who visits our blog posts, we wanna retarget them. It doesn't have to be that, it can be people who opted in and who saw the next page, or maybe they clicked a button and they saw a next page. It doesn't matter what page it is. You can do any page that you want. As long as the Facebook pixel is on it, you can track it, you can create a custom audience. Now, app activity is something that most of you will likely not use. You can create a list of people who launched your app or your game or took a specific action. Offline activity, you can create a list of people who interacted with your business your in-store business by phone, by offline channels, and all that. For engagement, you can create a list of people who engage with your content on Facebook or Instagram. Now, most of you are gonna use the customer file or the website traffic. Very, very few people actually use the app activity or the offline activity unless you have a local business. So one of these two, most likely you're gonna start out like this if you don't have a list. So you'll start here. So now that you understand the different types of custom audiences that you can create without overwhelming you, let's move on to the next video and we'll talk about how to create the custom audiences correctly. Hello and welcome back. This is video number eight and we're gonna talk about creating a custom audience. Now, it's really not hard. I'm gonna show you step-by-step -step what you need to do and we'll give you some recommended criteria to get started. So like I said, most of you are gonna use the website traffic custom audience. So I went ahead and just clicked on that one and you're gonna see this here. Now, Facebook might change the user interface, but the majority of time it's pretty much the same. So it says include people who meet any of the following criteria. Now you can change the any to all if you want. So we could say anybody who visits the initial page, any page, or let's say for example, the blog posts. If somebody visits the blog post or another blog post, let's say we have three different blog posts, then we can say anybody who visits any of these three blog posts, let's retarget them. Let's put them in a custom audience. So if it's any, you could say all website visitors, in the last 30 days. So it's all website visitors or people who visited a specific web page or they spent a, a certain amount of time on your website. And this is really good to have just in case somebody visits really quickly and then leaves. You're most likely not gonna wanna create a custom audience to somebody who comes to your website and within five seconds leaves you would rather create a custom audience of people who perhaps came, spent about 10 minutes or more, and then you could create a custom audience on that because that usually means that they are interested in what you have to offer. 
So you could do that. You could do, you know, specific events like page view, general event, view content or purchase. Now, if it's a specific web page, then you're going to want to enter the full URL or what you could do is you could say anybody who visits a specific web page that has the keyword blog in it or paint something like a keyword. Now, what I would recommend is to enter the full URL right here. So you could have one here, you could include more like so. So you could click that and include more and more and more. Or you could say something like include people who meet all. So they have to have visited blog post one, two, and three in order to be considered part of that custom audience. Now, what we found over the years is the more specific, the better. If you can get a custom audience for a very specific page, then when you create a retargeting ad, you will be able to talk to them very specifically. It becomes a problem when you become too general and the Facebook ad is too general and it doesn't really meet the specific needs of that visitor, if that makes sense. Now, another question that you might have is, well, out of the 30 days, do I want to do 30 days? Meaning anyone who visit the specific page in the past 30 days is going to be inside of this custom audience. Now, the maximum time is 180 days, so you could do 180 days. But I am going to warn you because the majority of people who come to your page are not going to remember you past seven days. So keeping that in mind, you may want to stick with 30 days or less. And if it's sometimes, if you think about, if you go to a web page, a lot of times you're not even going to remember it even 30 days down the road, unless it's a, a review page for a product that they are interested in or a product that they might be going to buy. So it really depends on the specific page that they have visited. Maybe they clicked add to cart, but they did not purchase. If that's the case, they're most likely going to remember it. But past 30 days, that becomes an issue. And if that becomes an issue, your conversions are not going to be there and they might click spam, which can actually hurt your Facebook ad. So bear that in mind whenever you're creating these custom audiences. Now you can also exclude. So you can say anyone who visits these pages, but I don't want to include maybe the third blog post. So I want to say anyone who visits the first two blog posts, but we're going to exclude the third one. You click exclude and you simply do the same thing and you enter the web pages there. So when you're done and you're ready, simply click on audience name, enter the name of the audience. Now, one thing to keep in mind is when you name the audience, name it something that you are going to remember and use a naming convention that you are going to remember. A lot of times it's easy to just name it anything that you want. But as you begin to build more custom audiences, you're going to forget that's reality and that's it. Hello and congratulations. You've reached the end of this video course. This is video number nine, and we're going to talk about how to set up your Facebook ad and then set it up so that you are targeting the custom audience. It's actually very easy to do. All you have to do is simply go to your ads manager create a ad, and then you'll see this screen. Now, as I said before, Facebook likes to change up everything oftentimes once a month or if not more. So you may not see this screen at all. You may see something totally different. But as of now, it says, how do you want to create your ad campaigns? You can create complete campaigns with all the details now. Or you can simply set up your campaign structure and fill in the details of your ad sets and ads later. So in this case, we're going to do this. And then, of course, you have the campaign, you have the ad set, and then, of course, you have the ad. So it's top down. So you have the campaign, which is the overarching 
essentially covering everything. And then you have the ad set, which you can use to focus on the audience, the placements, and the budget and schedule. And then of course you have the ad. So as you can see here, the custom audience will be chosen under the ad set level. So at this point in time, you're gonna to want to choose an objective. Either you're trying to brand yourself and you're simply going to drive people to a blog post and that's it. Or you can use traffic, engagement, app installs, video views, which is great for videos, conversions, catalog sales, or store visits. Now, like I said earlier, your most of your objectives are gonna be traffic. So we're gonna go ahead and click this here. And then of course, we're gonna name the campaign. We'll call it retargeting test one. You can split test, you can do budget optimization. We're not gonna do any of that. We're gonna keep it simple. Now, as you can see here, this allows us to focus on a specific demographic. So we've got traffic, we scroll down. And this specific area allows us to choose the custom audience. So as you can see here, custom audiences, you simply click here and you will be able to choose the custom audience. Now I'm not gonna do that now because I've got several custom audiences in there, but you just click here and then choose the custom audience. And it's really that easy. Now location allows you to specify a specific location. So if you wanna do custom audiences, anybody who visited a specific page, but is also located in the United States and is within the age bracket of, let's say 20 to 30 or even 60. And we only wanna focus on men or women. And we only wanna focus on a specific language or we wanna do all so as you are changing these items here, you're gonna see a little meter on the right-hand side. And this will give you an idea of your potential reach or how many people you will be able to reach. Now, if it's a custom audience, most likely that number is gonna be lower. And just bear in mind that if you just started your custom audience, sometimes it takes time and for Facebook to collect enough data for it to actually populate. So sometimes you may not even see it say potential reach a thousand yet because it's still populating and you're still gathering enough data. So imagine Facebook is trying to gather enough data about your audience in order for it to actually show your ad to that audience. Now you can specify it and make it more detailed, but I wouldn't recommend that. If you're focusing on a custom audience, I would focus on the whole audience. And of course you have placements. We just choose automatic and then the daily budget. Usually a good start is $5. You can run a the ad set continuously starting today or you can set a start date and an end date. And there we go. So all the ad set level is focused on custom audiences, the targeting and all of that. And then of course, when we move to the ad level, that is when we begin to create the ads, the graphics and all of that. But I really wanted to focus primarily on this so that you can see where you're supposed to choose the custom audience. So you can only choose, in this case, you can choose several custom audiences, but you don't really want to because you wanna make a Facebook ad that is focused on a very specific person. And that's really all it is. And as you can see, it's not hard to do. So one of the biggest problems any online business owner will face is making the first sale with a new prospective customer. Statistics show that in general, only 2% of prospects convert. Now the other 98% leave and may never come back to your website. This means that any money that you've invested into getting people to visit your website has been lost. And that can actually quickly add up to a lot of wasted money. Now, if we take a closer look at these statistics, the big question becomes, 
Why do online shoppers leave without paying or taking some sort of action? Now, although there are maybe hundreds of reasons why a potential customer may not take action or make a purchase, these five are some of the most common. Number one, they are presented with unexpected costs or they can't afford it. Number two, they thought the price was just too expensive. Number three, they found a better price elsewhere. Or number four, they decided against buying. Or number five, they were just browsing. You see, with such a high percentage of people leaving your site, each of course with their own reasoning, is there any way to get them back to your site without having to reinvest a ton of more money into getting new clients? The answer is yes. And this is what we call retargeting. Facebook retargeting marketing is gaining more and more popularity with website owners. And here's why. I'm sure you've run into retargeting ads that are targeted towards yourself. And let me explain how they work. Imagine if you go to google.com and you type in a specific item that you're looking to buy, say barbecue grills. Let's say this barbecue grill website owner sets up a Facebook retargeting campaign. You're interested, but you don't buy at the very moment. Maybe it's because you're busy, maybe because the price is too high, maybe whatever reason it is, you leave. Then you happen to go to facebook.com and see ads related to the site that you've just visited. You're intrigued and you come back and buy or take a specific action. You see, in this case, the retargeting ads sealed the deal that you would ultimately buy from them. If you're still not convinced of the power of retargeting, then here's a specific statistic. You see, according to Comscore study, retargeting ads led to about 1,046 increase in branded search and about 726 lift in site visitation after about four weeks of retargeted ad exposure. That's a huge, huge amount of people that otherwise would likely never come back to your website or your landing page. Now, the best news about this is that you can do it for your own website. So I'd like to introduce you to a nine part video course that shows you how to do this step by step. So in other words, while 2% of your prospects may convert after viewing the website initially, the other 98% who may leave may never come back. So this video course is all about how to professionally use Facebook retargeting marketing to bring back about 98% and convert window shoppers into buyers. So I'm going to show you how to properly set this up and use the power of retargeting on the facebook.com platform. Now here's a quick overview of what's inside this video course. Video number one is the introduction. We'll give you a quick overview of the course. We'll talk about how to get in the right mindset so that you start off strong. And then we talk about what tools and what things you'll need to have in hand to get started. Video number two is a visual mind map of the Facebook retargeting process. Before we jump in and show you how to set things up step by step, it's really good to get a bird's eye view or a general view of everything at once. So this is what this video covers. Video number three, we'll talk about the visual mind map of real life scenarios. By giving you some real life scenarios or real life examples, what this does is it enables your mind to start moving, start jogging with ideas so that you can pick and choose which one you want to go with and that you begin to understand the whole process of Facebook retargeting. Number four, we'll talk about the Facebook pixel, what it is, why it's important and how you can use it. Video number five, we'll talk about adding the pixel to your website, whether you're using WordPress or ClickFunnels, lead pages, or any other landing page builder. Video number six, we'll talk about pixel variables and settings, otherwise known as standard events. Video number seven, we'll talk about custom audiences and of course how to create custom audiences in video number eight. And of course, last but not least, video number nine, we'll talk about retargeting campaign setup. So we're going to take everything that you've learned up until this point and set up a campaign to show you how to implement and embed the custom audiences within that retargeting campaign. So if you're interested in how to create your own highly successful Facebook retargeting campaign, with that said, everything you need to know is right here inside this video course. So one of the biggest problems any online business owner will face is making the first sale with a new prospective customer. Statistics show that in general, only 2% of prospects convert. Now the other 98% leave and may never come back to your website. 
This means that any money that you've invested into getting people to visit your website has been lost. And that can actually quickly add up to a lot of wasted money. Now, if we take a closer look at these statistics, the big question becomes, why do online shoppers leave without paying or taking some sort of action? Now, although there are maybe hundreds of reasons why a potential customer may not take action or make a purchase, these five are some of the most common. Number one, they are presented with unexpected costs or they can't afford it. Number two, they thought the price was just too expensive. Number three, they found a better price elsewhere. Or number four, they decided against buying. Or number five, they were just browsing. You see, with such a high percentage of people leaving your site, each of course with their own reasoning, is there any way to get them back to your site without having to reinvest a ton of more money into getting new clients? The answer is yes. And this is what we call retargeting. Facebook retargeting marketing is gaining more and more popularity with website owners. And here's why. I'm sure you've run into retargeting ads that are targeted towards yourself. And let me explain how they work. Imagine if you go to google.com and you type in a specific item that you're looking to buy, say barbecue grills. Let's say this barbecue grill website owner sets up a Facebook retargeting campaign. You're interested, but you don't buy at the very moment. Maybe it's because you're busy, maybe because the price is too high, maybe whatever reason it is, you leave. Then you happen to go to facebook.com and see ads related to the site that you've just visited. You're intrigued and you come back and buy or take a specific action. You see, in this case, the retargeting ads seal the deal that you would ultimately buy from them. If you're still not convinced of the power of retargeting, then here's a specific statistic. You see, according to Comscore study, retargeting ads led to about 1,046 increase in branded search and about 726 lift in site visitation after about four weeks of retargeted ad exposure. That's a huge, huge amount of people that otherwise would likely never come back to your website or your landing page. Now, the best news about this is that you can do it for your own website. So I'd like to introduce you to a nine-part video course that shows you how to do this step by step. So in other words, while 2% of your prospects may convert after viewing the website initially, the other 98% who may leave may never come back. So this video course is all about how to professionally use Facebook retargeting marketing to bring back about 98% and convert window shoppers into buyers. So I'm gonna show you how to properly set this up and use the power of retargeting on the facebook.com platform. Now, here's a quick overview of what's inside this video course. Video number one is the introduction. We'll give you a quick overview of the course. We'll talk about how to get in the right mindset so that you start off strong. And then we talk about what tools and what things you'll need to have in hand to get started. Video number two is a visual mind map of the Facebook retargeting process. Before we jump in and show you how to set things up step by step. It's really good to get a bird's eye view or a general view of everything at once. So this is what this video covers. Video number three, we'll talk about the visual mind map of real life scenarios. By giving you some real life scenarios or real life examples, what this does is it enables your mind to start moving, start jogging with ideas so that you can pick and choose which one you want to go with and that you begin to understand the whole process of Facebook retargeting. Number four, we'll talk about the Facebook pixel, what it is, why it's important, and how you can use it. Video number five, we'll talk about adding the pixel to your website, whether you're using WordPress or ClickFunnels, lead pages, or any other landing page builder. Video number six, we'll talk about pixel variables and settings, otherwise known as standard events. Video number seven, we'll talk about custom audiences and of course how to create custom audiences in video number eight. And of course, last but not least, video number nine, we'll talk about retargeting campaign setup. So we're gonna take everything that you've learned up until this point and set up a campaign to show you how to implement and embed the custom audiences within that retargeting campaign. So if you're interested in how to create your own highly successful Facebook retargeting campaign, With that said, everything you need to know is right here inside this video course.
Hello and congratulations on getting access to this video course on Facebook retargeting. Okay, so this is video number one, which is the introduction and getting started. So before we get started, I want to give you a quick overview of what's inside this video course so you know exactly what to expect. So obviously this is video number one. Video number two is going to be a visual map of Facebook retargeting. And what that includes is I'm going to show you how Facebook retargeting works. And a lot of times people jump straight into showing you how to set things up. But unless you really understand how everything fits together, what connects to what and all of that, it's really going to become confusing because if you set things up like an email opt-in retargeting campaign or a blog post campaign, or a purchase retargeting campaign, every one of those is different. So once I show you the basics via a visual map, that's when we show you some real life examples in video number three. Of course, in video number four, I'm gonna talk about the Facebook pixel, what it is, why it's important, and how it's used. And of course, from that point, we'll move to video number five and talk about how to add the pixel to your website, whether you're using WordPress, ClickFunnels, lead pages, or any other landing page builder. Video number six, we'll talk about pixel variables and settings, otherwise known as standard events, such as how do you tell Facebook that somebody has landed on your page, somebody has converted into a lead, somebody has added the product to their shopping cart. Maybe you want to find people who have added things to the cart but have not yet purchased so that you can show an ad to them, remind them that they are interested in that purchase and, and perhaps give them some sort of discount as well. Video number seven, we're going to talk about custom audiences, which are essentially lists or segments of people that you have targeted. And when you create your Facebook ad, you can then target that specific custom audience and show that specific ad to that audience. And then of course, in video number eight, we'll have some practical application and show you how to create these custom audiences. And of course, last but not least, video number nine, we'll talk about retargeting campaign setup. All right, so let's talk about mindset because I'm a big believer of having the right mindset before you get started. I want you to realize that you're not going to make a sale. You're not going to get leads right away just by setting up a Facebook retargeting campaign. Converting visitors really does take time. And to be realistic, sometimes 12 to 17 times of touch points, meaning you have to get in front of them 12 to 17 times before they will buy. So I want to make sure that you don't expect an immediate action or an immediate sale. Now to get started, you're going to need these things. You're going to need to have a Facebook ad account. And in doing so, you'll also need to have a Facebook business account. And you can go to business.facebook.com to get access to a Facebook business account. Now having a business account is separate from the Facebook ad account. You'll obviously need money for ads, realistically at least $500 or more. This is not free by any means, but it's a great way to test things and find results right away. You'll also need to have an idea of how you are selling your product or service in terms of your website, in terms of your funnel landing page setup, meaning how many pages do you have in your funnel? Do you have three? Do you have four? Do you have five? How many? So you want to have an idea of that before you get started because it'll start to make sense once I show you around. And of course, you'll need to have some sort of mind map or flowchart software. And the reason for that is it will help you be able to map things out, map your own plan of attack out so that you will be able to successfully implement everything that we're teaching you. 